Gina DeLuca here. All right. Uh, today, as you can see, I have my edges already covered, so we're doing a straight four, my favorite. Uh, I did a painting with this Deco Art Americano Decor Metallics in Garnet, and uh, it was an amazing cell maker. And I have the 24 karat gold, which is also a great cell maker. And I have Liquitex Basics in Mars Black. In a straight pour, it's important that you get the Mars Black. That one actually um, acts as a background. Not The Carbon Black doesn't work quite as well for a straight pour. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can just fast forward about a minute. If you have not, what we have are, let's find you a new one, 52 cards, and there are 48, I'm sorry, 42 technique cards, and each card has an associated video here on YouTube full tutorial with all the information that you need, the exact paint, brands, colors, the recipe, the consistency, a picture describing said technique, a little box that has some tips regarding the uh, that particular technique, and a color palette. But there's also, these two boxes can be used as the basis of a, a two color pour or a two color palette, or add another color of your own liking. There are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of them. You can use it for more than just pouring to whatever art forms you're in, if you do crochet or beadwork, what have you. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net. The consistency that we're working with, it's a, uh, this is about a two on my consistency scale. When I'm working with metallics, I don't take it down to a one because the mica makes it appear thicker. And even if you take it to a one, it's still going to look thick, thicker than a one of a regular non-metallic color. And if you go to a one, it will kind of disperse and make a sheen, which can be very pretty. I'm not saying I never do that. Sometimes I want that. I want that very just thin sheen of mica just laying across where you can only see it at certain angles. But for this, I want cells, so I went with the two. So these are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with my 10% uh, Floetrol, 90% water concoction. The first thing I'm going to do is put a little paint in this cup so I know that I have enough for my pour. This is a 16 by 20. And this will be uh, eight ounces of paint that should be going in that cup for a 16 by 20. Now I say that because I am factoring in my uh, base coat here. It would normally be about 12 ounces. The way that you get that is you, well, for Americans, I can't speak on metric. Maybe somebody can put it in the comments and I'll pin it. But uh, your length times width gives you your square inches. Divide the square inch by 28 and that will give you how many ounces you need to cover. I generally do for a straight pour 
I consider 30% for the base coat. And then the other 70% goes into my pouring cup. And it generally seems to work out pretty well for me. All right, my base coat is down and now I'm gonna put some paint in a cup. I'm going to start with the gold first. The red definitely takes over. I'm not sure how it will react with this gold, which can also take over, but if I have my druthers, I want the gold in the center, more in the center, and the red more on the outside. So gold goes first, so it comes out last and ends up in the center pouring kind of from up high because I want it to sink. And now the garnet. The garnet's pushing that gold up. Whatever happens, it's probably going to be pretty because these colors go very well together. You can see it is already selling. Let's make a mess. Looks like I had a little drip off the side there. That's all right. It'll just look like a cell. All right, let's pop these bubbles. I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute and uh, see what happens before I decide which direction to tilt first. Okay, I'm gonna go this way first, like I usually do. I think just the way that, uh, that the paint comes out of the cup as I'm holding it, if I did it with my left hand, it would probably be over there, or over there. I don't know, uh, confusing myself. But anyway, I do have a tendency to lean in this direction because it seems like the most interesting stuff at first is happening there. And then when I stretch this side, I get those pop-up cells. So this is more like the cells that kind of resemble boulders. You get that really 3D look. And then over here tends to be those pop-up cells that can sometimes look like snowflakes or... Um, they get some very interesting dendrite type effect going on. I'm gonna use my corner catcher. Remember to bring your paint back to center before changing directions. You 
use the weight of the paint to push the rest of the paint around. So you can get pretty darn close to getting corners. Obviously not 90 degrees, they're gonna be somewhat rounded. <clears throat> get the schmutz as soon as you see it. So the weight of my paint is pretty much where that center is. So I'm just going to push this just a bit, just enough. That's enough. You can get very precise, very, very precise with your tilting if you are careful. Actually, I'm going to do this corner first. And I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to uh, tilt that. It's about as close to a corner as you can create <laughs> with a liquid. All right, I want to push this just a hair. This area just a little bit. So I'm making sure my paint is where it needs to be in order to do so. The more I move this around, the more cells are going to pop up. But you want to be very careful about how you're moving it so that you're not messing up your composition. So moving slowly is your friend. That will help you maintain your composition and being aware of the weight of your paint. 
what is pushing, what is pulling. So I'm just trying to get some stretch going over here. And that'll make those, looks like the gold cells are going to pop up. But I'm not, I'm not tilting anything off of this side because the weight of my paint is right there. So I will stop before it gets to the point where it's pushing that off and bring it back. Now, where do I want my little uh, spiral to sit? I don't generally like it dead center. Unless it's perfectly symmetrical, which this is not. So, I'm going to bring it over a bit. down. Okay, I am going to let this sit and do whatever it's going to do. And I will bring you in for a close up. Okay, here it is. I am quite pleased with how this turned out. It didn't get overrun with cells. I have plenty of negative space in there. Sometimes they really just take over. I think if I go thinner, particularly with this red, um, I think it has a tendency to uh, create more cells. So going just slightly thicker. Gives it a little bit more control. But look at this sparkle. Zowie. That is so cool. Man, do I love metallics. I love the gold lines that are coming out there. And of course, got our gold cells here. Got a little bit of the 3D action going on. Not a whole lot. Not like the crazy 3D action. But a bit of it. Yeah. So there it is. In all its sparkling glory. And when this is dried and varnished, the metallics will just pop off of that black background. But there it is. You can see the edges have already started to dry. It's been sitting here for a while. So it's probably not going to change anymore. All right. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, do like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal and Venmo tip jars if you feel so inclined. Always appreciate it, but never expect it. There is a link to my Amazon store. If you enter through that link, anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Also is the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. And also you'll find my website, GinaDeLuca.net. That is where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards available for purchase. And 
that my latest CD is now available on Spotify and iTunes and wherever you get your digital music. But uh, if you buy the CD from my website, I'll sign it and send it to you. Can't get that through digital. All right. That's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.